Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zonda Spring Edition of the Mortgage Playbook Webinar. I am Nicolette Chapman, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by our incredibly talented Chief Economist, Ali Wolf. Now, before we begin, please do note that we talk fast and we cover a lot of ground. So if you miss anything, don't worry. We will follow up with a link to the recording. Please submit your questions at any time and then time permitting, we will answer them live at the end of the event. In addition, please do take a moment to go ahead and fill out our exit survey. Now, who are we? We are Zonda, a housing data and consultancy firm. We track the entire building life cycle from raw land all the way to the closeout of new home communities. Our database tracks actively selling communities across the country, and we can tell you who the best selling builders are and where to find the best selling communities. Today's event is sponsored by Zonda Mortgage Pro. If you aren't familiar with Zonda Mortgage Pro, this product will help lenders secure more builder business by helping them identify opportunities to work with builders who don't have a solid lender relationship. We can also track market share down to the subdivision level. Simply stated, in addition to helping identify potential builder partners, Mortgage Pro can help you connect with those decision makers and grow your share of the new build market. Now, we are thrilled to announce that we've just integrated NMLS level data to the platform, which allows recruiters to identify top producers in this purchase have rate market. To schedule your demo today, please do visit us at zondahome.com forward slash mortgage pro. Now, on today's agenda, we're going to kick the 30 minute session off with an incredibly packed housing update. There's certainly no shortage of items to discuss. We'll then end with some market specific sales strategies in order to help you build more builder business in today's current market. And so please allow me to introduce our housing guru, my friend, Chief Economist, Ali Wolf. For those of you who haven't had a chance to hear Ali speak before, you are in for a real treat. Ali has been featured on various platforms, including Bloomberg TV and Yahoo Finance. She also currently consults the White House on housing affordability. She is an extremely well-respected thought leader and has a bachelor's degree from, in economics from The Ohio State University, as well as a master's degree from the London School of Economics. Ali has been a road warrior lately. In fact, she's joining us today from Charlotte, where she's consulting with one of our customers. And as exhausting as it can be, sometimes she's able to find a little bit of time to throw fun in the mix. Recently, she was able to perfectly time a speaking engagement in Jacksonville just to coincide with her dad's 70th birthday. Not bad timing for a girl who lives in California. And so with that, Ali, I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Nicolette. And I know you're also a road warrior these days. And so our team is just going around the country. As we all know, we're in a very fluid environment and we're just trying to figure out it and piece it all together. And so that's what you're going to see in today's presentation. I'm going to set my timer. We have 20 minutes to get through the housing update. Now, as we talk about what's going on in the market, I want to start by stepping back and just acknowledging the backdrop. Many of us know this by heart at, the, at this point, but we have an unemployment rate nationally that's in the 3%. People that want jobs have jobs. Companies are looking to grow and expand, but they're finding the labor shortage is causing them to raise wages if they want to retract or retrain, attain workers. As we're looking at this, consumer spending is up. We have consumers that are willing and able to spend their money, but we still have the supply chain challenges. Those are absolutely impacting the home building industry, new home construction, but it's also just impacting the economy in general, which is why as we look at inflation, the consumer price index, one of the two main ways you can track inflation is showing growth is up 8.5%. So inflation, 8.5% than where we were last year. Now, if you remember a healthy, well-functioning economy should have 2% inflation. And so we're at the point that we're beyond a good and strong economy. We're to the point that we have an unhealthy economy. It's growing faster than it can keep up. 
which is why the Federal Reserve has come out and they've said they need to be aggressive on policy. We've already seen the 25 basis point increase with six additional expected this year. Now, remember, just because the Federal Reserve says six doesn't mean they have to do it. If the market starts to come down, they may not move forward with all of those. Another thing you need to note is that when the Federal Reserve is going through this policy change, you should expect to see auto sales, job data, housing data slow. That's the point of these changes, to intentionally slow the economy. But what the Federal Reserve is trying to do, and they're walking this really fine line, is are they going to be able to pull off a hard landing or a soft landing? Soft landing is what they want. Soft landing is what every single one of us wants, which is get the economy back on track, get it to a smoother and consistent path of growth. Hard landing, unfortunately, is a more likely outcome. Hard landing means a recession. Federal Reserve isn't trying to do it, but they're in a, a tricky place, especially with inflation as high as it is today. Now, as we look at the Federal Reserve policy, the important thing to do is remember that investors and the markets are not waiting for the Fed to act. They already know that we're going to likely have six more rate increases this year. Investors already know that quantitative tightening is coming. Investors already know that inflation is high and the horrific events in Ukraine are only pushing up the levels of inflation and stretching out how long it's going on, which is why we've seen the 10-year go up. And we've seen, of course, mortgage rates following closely with that. And I know for, for you guys, this is no surprise, but for other people in the industry, there's the surprise of why is it that the Fed has only raised rates 25 basis basis points, and yet mortgage rates are up nearly 200 basis points since the beginning of the year. And that's, again, because we're not waiting. The markets are, in theory, efficient. So you have to take this data, and then you have to ask yourself, well, how is the market continuing to perform? I know each of you will have your individual consumers that you're working with, but we like to supplement that with on the ground surveys. If you don't know that much about Zonda, since we track the entire building life cycle, we can track real time trends in sales, but we have to wait, especially since we're right at the end of the month, we're waiting until the month ends to be able to give you those full results. We supplement that with a division president survey. And what we were able to do last week, we collected the data Monday through Friday. So this is data up and through last Friday. We were able to ask their builders, we know that interest rates have gone up. You know interest rates have gone up. How is that impacting your contract sales? We have probably no surprise about 32, 35% of builders that are saying that demand is now slower compared to where it was in March. 60% of builders are saying, you know what? Demand is still on track with what we expected. And I would say that's higher than what I would have imagined given how quickly we've seen the run-up in rates. Now, part of this is because buyers are motivated and it seems like those motivating factors are more powerful right now. Mortgage rate urgency, home price urgency, inflation at 8.5%. People are saying, well, housing can be an inflation hedge in today's market and the fear of missing out. Those factors are driving people to continue to want to purchase. But we also have going to that 32, 35%, some buyers that are deterred in today's market, deterred by choice. So the opposite of fear of missing out, you have the fear of buying at the top. Some people saying, I don't want to step in. The market's gone too crazy. It's, it's risen too fast. And you also have people that are deterred by force. So when you look at the monthly payment and look at the change in the mortgage rates, the monthly payment has risen 30% since the beginning of the year from mortgage rates alone. And that's not a number that a lot of consumers can just brush off. And, and we see that on the ground as well. When you look at contract cancellations, this is historically a number that we like to look at as your early sign of what is happening in the market. We, we know that there are still contract um, signings that are being done, but what about people that were already under contract? We have about 35% of builders that, again, as of last Friday, said that they're seeing an increase in the overall level of cancellations. Now, there are a few things you need to know. One is, as I mentioned, this is an important indicator. This is kind of your early sign to be watching. The second is we are looking at these cancellations from an extremely low base. For the past two years, builders have been saying we don't really have any cancellations to report. So the fact that there are these, these cancellations, it's an increase. It's not saying it's a large share of the overall market. And the third thing you need to know is the cancellations, at least for a while, were almost celebrated because the builder could resell the home at a higher price. I would say now there's a little bit of a mix of, we wanna make sure there's someone there to backfill, backfill the, the cancellation. And for the most part in today's market, we still have that. But what we're calling right now is, is the inflection point in the market. We also have 16% of builders that reported an increase in incentives. 
Now think about that, 16%, that's not a high number. Uh, again, it's coming from low single digits of a couple months ago, but we're starting to see those incentives come about. And luckily at Zonda, we're able to go into our database, we're able to look at each of the markets, and we can track what those incentives look like. And if you look right in the middle of this table, you see the dollar amount, the average by market of the closing cost with the preferred lender, and then the percent of projects that fall under that. And so in some areas like Las Vegas, almost 70% of the builders are offering an incentive if you work with the preferred lender. So this becomes important to you guys. And I would say it's important to you, but also important to think about builders. They want to have people they can trust. They want to have a great lender in place. If you're talking about cancellations, if you're talking about rising interest rates, now is such a good time to be having that unique selling proposition and having that relationship with the builders. Now, this is where the market gets unique, though, because I'm talking about interest rates up, cancellations up, incentives up, but then get this, prices up. And I think part of that comes to the idea that there's still those 60% of builders saying the market's okay. And as you look across the board, this is showing you the percent of new home projects that raised prices nationally. We're looking at 80 to 90% of the different projects across the country that are still raising prices. That data is through March, again, supplementing that with our division president survey, 84% of builders as of last Friday reported that they increased prices compared to where they were in March. So why are they doing this? Partly because costs continue to go up. We have land costs, we have labor costs, we have material costs. We have been in a place where the builders are having those cost increases, they'll pass it on to the consumers, partly because there's still a lot of that pricing power in place such an absolute difference compared to last cycle is what we're seeing in overall inventory. New home community count. Anywhere where there are five or more units for sale is still down double digits compared to where it was a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic levels. And usually if there's not enough new home inventory or not enough resale inventory, both of these groups can try to work together. But what we're seeing is even on the resale side, inventory is extremely constrained. That little mint color at the bottom, that's showing you active listings for 2022. Now acknowledge when you're looking at these listing numbers, while the market has shifted and while we do believe we're at that inflection point, we also know that many homes, because of the dearth of inventory, are still selling very quickly within two, three, four weeks. If they're selling within the month, not all of the homes on the market are getting captured in these listing numbers. So it's a little bit lower than what is, what is the reality on the ground. But we also know so many Americans went through a refinance and a lot of Americans are saying, I'd love to sell, I'd love to move, but where am I going? So, so we do know that inventory across the board is very tight. But when you have inventory as tight as it is, one of the challenges in the marketplace is to get a true sense of demand because you can look at total sales. We see this in the new home space. We see this in the existing home space. The numbers are down. And I think it's an easy leap to say they're down because demand has slowed, but you also need to say they're down because inventory has come down. And so one of the benefits again here at Zonda is we can control sales for inventory. That's called the average sales rate. You look at the average sales rate for the communities that are actively selling. One thing to caveat this with is we still have 82% of builders that are capping sales. Now remember the sales caps were in place because builders were selling out of homes quicker than they could replace them. And they had more demand than production capacity allowed. So they said, I could sell 10, I'm choosing to sell two. Now, we believe that changes. This 82 is down. It used to be in solidly in the 90s. This is in, I think, response to the rising mortgage rate environment and some of the changes in consumer behavior. But as you look at this compared to 2019, 2019 is the yellow. You see the, the purple is the current level. These are the markets across the country that have that highest average sales rate. Basically, every top market and even places like Modesto and Bakersfield, which are, are not necessarily a top market from overall population, you're still seeing these areas have a high level of overall sales rate. These are the markets that we've called out for the best sales. You can see that it mixes of different geographies, of different uh, price points, of different population levels. Now, as we look at this, we've been talking to the builders and saying, OK, we know the market is shifting a little bit. What does it feel like on the ground for you? And we have 16% of builders that are saying, we don't have any challenges. Now, of course, they have supply chain challenges, but from a demand point of view, they're saying we can raise prices 25, 30, $40,000 month over month, and buyers are not blinking. Now that's 16%. That leaves the rest of the market where there is a little bit of, of uh, sensitivity to what's happening with pricing. And we call that a price ceiling. 
We have builders that are saying things like we seem to have hit a wall with a buyer. Or we're losing more and more people due to pricing. And I think many of you can relate to, to this section here where you have 52% of builders saying pre-qualified buyers are no longer able to qualify, 33% saying buyers not getting qualified in general. So I think this becomes an important point with the, with the builders talking about those qualifications and, and what can we do to help get those buyers into a home, especially with the backdrop of rates. We talked about the 30% change in the monthly payment. I think a really interesting stat is if you had someone who was totally capped out, they could not have put another penny towards housing at a $450,000 home at a 3% interest rate, the equivalent at a 5% interest rate is 350. Now, we know not everyone is totally capped out. Not everyone cannot put another penny towards housing, but those numbers are important to keep in the back of your mind. A 1% change in interest rate translates to a 13.2% change in home price. Now, when we look at those, if you're a relocation buyer, if you're a wealth buyer, if you're moving from California to Charlotte, if you have a lot of money in the stock market, those buyers, yes, interest rates have gone up. Yes, it's frustrating, but they can still make the deal work. It's a, it's a different environment, it's a little frustrating again, but, but it's okay. When you look at the market though, and we're looking at income buyers, first time buyers, low income buyers, these are the buyers that are absolutely feeling the pain on the ground of this market. And we can't, from a long-term housing point of view, only cater to the group on the right. We need to be catering to both of these groups. And as we look at this, more building can help. And builders are absolutely aware of this. You can look at where we have the most housing starts across the country, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, Atlanta, Austin. But look at that percent change column. We're seeing double digit growth in overall housing starts. Builders are doing the best that they can given their limitations to get more homes built. And in doing so, in some markets across the country, they're able to capture a wider share of the market. So historically, the existing home market always has been, and I would say always will be, of the larger part of the market just based on sheer volume. But in somewhere like Austin, Raleigh, Dallas, Indianapolis, Houston, you're looking at 25 to 35% of the market now falls into the new home space. So if we know that there are a lot of starts that are being built, we know builders are capturing a little bit more of the market share, you also want to say, well, what's coming down the pipeline? Those that are started, maybe some of them have contracts on. If not, those will become available to consumers in the next quarter or two. But let's look a little bit further down the line. We're able to track total upcoming lots. Let's look at lots that, have, that are in the roadwork phase, that are going through excavation, that have equipment on site. The most recent data shows that we have a 26% increase in total upcoming lots. Let me explain what that means. 70% of the lots right now that are in development will become available to a builder towards the end of this year. When the builder gets it, they're gonna start building on it. Let's look at it by market. You can see then that those will become available to consumers towards the middle or end of next year. So there is a lot of activity to try to support additional growth, but the way that the lot development is falling in the timeline is it's gonna take some more time for those homes to ultimately come to the market. But the backdrop of today's presentation is that the market has shifted a little bit and we need to try to figure out how to solve for, remember that group on the right versus the group on the left. We need to figure out how to solve for that group on the left. And in the existing home market, you can't really do much about that. Builders can. So we asked builders in our most recent survey, what are you doing about affordability? Whether it's for first time buyers or just lower income buyers. And there were some builders that said nothing. There's nothing we can do. Costs have gone up too much. We're not going to be able to provide for entry-level buyers. But then you have builders that are saying, we're doing higher density, single family detached. We're building more in the condo market. We're doing ADUs to help with financing. We're offering different levels of finishes where we're doing more density. And a lot of builders talked about a shift towards attached product. So when you look at consumers, generally speaking, consumers say they want a single family detached home that matches what's being built. 78% of the product right now is detached. When you look at some markets, San Antonio, Austin, Houston, Lakeland in Florida, Sacramento, Columbus, Phoenix, these are areas that have benefited from the migration and they still have over 90% of their product that is single family detached. They haven't had to do some of the density solutions we've seen in other parts of the market. And to me, this is the silver lining of the whole discussion is you can still do little changes to product that can adjust price that can help the market continue to move forward. Now, as I finish with our forecasts, 
we are calling for growth in terms of starts. We're calling for 2.2%. You'll know that that's not that high of a number, especially when I talk about the land and lot development. For us, we're trying to be realistic about what is available on the labor side, what's available on the supply chain side of being able to get materials sourced. But we do expect to see more starts and some of those starts last year becoming available to consumers this year via being a spec home. So when we look at sales, Sales is an interesting dynamic because if you've been tracking year to date new home sales, they have been down a lot. And remember, when you're looking at sales, that's going to be partly a function of supply, also a function of demand, but partly a function of supply. Our belief is that supply goes up a little bit this year. Sales caps, which were at 90%, now they're at 82%. We think sales caps go down throughout this year. More builders willing to take a little bit more of contracts. We know that those two will be positive forces up on sales, and then we're trying to adjust down for affordability. We obviously know affordability becomes the backdrop to this whole discussion. And as I finish the presentation, I just want to remind ourselves, why home ownership? When you have this dynamic market, when you have interest rates that are up 200 basis points, what's the reason why someone should be buying today anyways? And I think one you heard me mention earlier is people are already doing this, looking at housing as their inflation hedge, locking in the largest part of their monthly budget. And if interest rates come down, which I know a lot of consumers are upset about, they can always refinance later if they need to. But locking in now at least gives them certainty on their rates, certainty on what their monthly payment looks like. And as they're making those payments, they're paying to themselves in an environment where rent continues to rise. So there's not certainty about what that monthly payment will be on the rental side. What we, we always, when, when I get asked, should I buy now, we are not of the belief that you should time the market. I can't tell you how many of my friends sold their homes two years ago when I've been waiting to buy and they've only seen the level of appreciation continue to go up. To me, what becomes important is if we're walking, working with someone who is ready to have a family, they want to be in a good school district, they, or they already have kids and they, they have their mindset up, they want to live there and they're going to live there for a while, even if we go through some kind of cycle and some kind of change in the market, which we think we will, there's still kind of that long-term benefit of planning down your roots and being able to secure in a location and with a product that you want. And I think many of you are probably doing this already, but don't forget about how many millennials, we know this from our millennial survey, still think you have to do a 20% down payment. I know once they get to you, you guys can communicate on, on the changes there, but I think something with social networking, trying to, to get that out to communicate the changes, um, and maybe not even changes, just the reality of the market. I'd communicate the mortgage market, the idea of rate lock, the idea of extended rate locks, and also working with builders, having the rate buy downs. And then also looking at the incentives. The incentives becomes an important point and an important selling point of the new home market. Maybe you'll see some price cuts on the existing home side. On the new home side, as the market changes a little bit, you saw that some of those incentives become available to buyers that buy new. Now with that, I'd like to bring back in our Vice President of Mortgage, Nicolette Chapman. You've heard Nicolette at the beginning, but let me give you a little bit more about her. Nicolette has 20 years of experience in the home building space and most recently ran the builder division of a national mortgage company before joining Zonda. As many of you know, Nicolette and I have been doing these virtual presentations together for almost two years, but you can now see Nicolette live around the country as she meets with local mortgage associations, providing tips and tricks to be successful in today's market. These events, by the way, are sold out with standing room only. You'll get a glimpse of what she talks about here today. So Nicolette, let me pass it to you. Thank you, Ali. Some incredible information as always. Um, really looking forward to sort of diving in a little bit based on some of the information that you shared in order to uh, be able to help our lending community take advantage of this marketplace in order to win more business. So some key takeaways that I have from some of the information that you provided is going back to, I think, your sixth slide. You said it is more important than ever to builders to have a great lender in place. And I think that's something that I really want to hit home. Um, if you are committed to really being good in that builder space, there's certainly open arms for it. Um, you know, the rate environment certainly requires someone that's very solid and dependable, a great pipeline manager in place. Um, certainly someone that's also willing to be creative and think outside the box. And so that's going to lead me to my second point in that key takeaway is, as you mentioned, price ceiling is a growing risk. Um, my advice to every lender on this call today would be 
become a creative loan technician. Um, and it's not enough anymore just to be a great loan technician, but you also have to be creative. You know, really know your loan guidelines, really dig deep into your own company's offerings in terms of understanding where you might be able to provide solutions that are outside of the box. Um, you know, I was talking to one of our lender partners and he was saying even just outside of what loan programs exist, being able to be creative with their own finances. So essentially he was working with a couple uh, that the increased rates has sort of taken them out of the market. And so what he was able to learn though, was that they had two cars. They no longer really needed two cars. They were both work from home and the used car that they had, they actually were able to make like $10,000 on by selling it. And so it was just sort of a shift of being able to prioritize and sort of being able to make those DTI ratios fit. So be really creative, be extra communicative and really sort of help your buyers understand and prioritize how important homeownership is to them. Um, number three, you know, become the expert in your local market in order to really anticipate needs and provide solutions. Um, Ali obviously did this great presentation in terms of understanding the health of the market. Um, at Zonda, we have so much data at your fingertips in order to be able to help understand what's really going on in those local and regional markets. And if you're able to sort of educate your builder partners on how you're able to sort of be part of a solution in this environment, uh, that's going to score a lot of points. Number four, um, and I say this all the time for those of you who've met with me, uh, the power of proprietary is something that's very important. You know, everyone understands the basic FHA financing or your VA financing, or even obviously those conforming loans. But if you're able to provide solutions for buyers that maybe wouldn't necessarily qualify or be able to offer something that's more attractive, uh, that's certainly important. I think Ali mentioned a little bit earlier, buying down the rate. I think that's something that builders and particularly in that first time or entry level home buyer space are going to be extremely interested in. Um, again, really dig deep and find out what offerings that you have that your competition might not have access to in order to really create those relationships. Um, point five, I think is obviously lot supply is up. Uh, resale inventory remains scarce. Um, biggest takeaway for me here is that I think we're not going to see resale inventory loosen up anytime soon. Um, many sellers are frankly unwilling to give up their interest rate that lies in the 2% in favor for something that's in the fives. Um, it pushes that monthly payment um, through the roof for them and the prices haven't necessarily uh, warranted being able to account for that pricing adjustment. So I will think, I think that more people will continue to push into new construction. Um, my advice for lenders out there is it's time to pivot and diversify. You know, what 10 out of 10 loan officers go after resale business. Um, you know, one out of 75 go after builders. So it's time to really become a technician, a creative loan technician in the builder space. And I think you'll be surprised at how fast you'll be able to earn business. And then lastly, you know, seize the opportunity. This is a great time to go out there and create these relationships as going back to point number one, it's more important than ever to builders to have a great lender in place. I just want to end with pointing out some incredible opportunity. In 2021, you know, we had over 743,000 new build closings across the country with almost 40,000 unique builders. I know that the big ones always come top of mind, but um, as I sort of end the call today, I just want to let you know that we at Zonda do have data on all 39,487 of those builders, we'd love to be able to help you identify opportunities that exist in your local and regional marketplaces. Um, if you have questions or if you'd like additional information, um, please reach out to me at nchapman at zondahome.com or of course request a demo at zondahome.com forward slash mortgage pro. And with that, I think we're right at time. So we appreciate you tuning in today. Be on the lookout for the link for the recording and we'll be seeing you at our future events. Thanks and have a great day, everyone.